Hi, my name's Gareth Spence. Almost six months ago, I sat down with Advert Optical Networking and OpenReach to talk about the optical spectrum services, the Advert FSP3000, and the future of enterprise networking. Now, along the banks of the River Thames, I'm back to find out what's happening and what's new. I think we'll have a lot to talk about. For any of you who watched our first roundtable, you may notice a few familiar faces. Let me introduce everyone. We have John Bretherick from OpenReach, Darren King from Adva Optical Networking, and let me introduce a new member to the discussion, Darren Wallington from OpenReach. Guys, thanks for joining me today. John, the last time we spoke, OSS was just about to be launched with the FSP3000 as the access part of the solution. You were talking to a lot of customers, a lot of interested parties, What's happened since then? Gareth, it's been a hectic time. It's, it, it's been really exciting. We, we launched, as we said we would, on the 31st of January. It was hugely important that we delivered on our promises to industry. Um, it's been the most successful launch I've been involved in. Um, we've had great feedback from customers. We've had a lot of effort from, from a marketing uh, plan, engagement, and then key leadership from product line, and working hand in hand with, uh, with Adver. Uh, it's, you know, it's been fantastic. You know, on, on day one, we'd, we'd eight, eight orders. Um, one specific order from the leading IT solutions uh, providers in the UK. And it wasn't about point-to-point -point circuits. It was about a complete solution to, to deliver uh, a capability to both consumer and business customers. Wow, it sounds like it's been incredible. Uh, another question for you and also perhaps Darren. How has the FSP3000 been received? It's, it's been received really well. I mean, from, from a, where are we from a sales perspective? Pipeline's up 90%. Um, we've got 30% uh, more customers who were, were talking to about the product, a number of smaller customers who are now seeing um, that they can utilize the, uh, the FSP3000 and optical spectrum services. Um, and we've, we've now got 25% increase in, in active customers as well. And, and, and as well as that, you know, the number of design requests we've seen come through our door has been huge. So, you know, positive. Yeah, incredible. It's fantastic. Darren, you're the, the product manager of this service, in charge of a great team working on it. How has it been for you to see this service being implemented and now up and running? So it's been uh, fantastic from concept to launch some 16 months and, and being involved with it um, all that time. It's been really good in terms of the collaboration that we've had with our customers, but also our design partners in BT Operate, BT Design, and also in partnership with yourselves, our vendor, Adver. So it's been very, very um, good indeed. You mentioned a key word there, that's collaboration. Yes. Uh, in regards to customers, I believe you have an industry forum and that customers really help to steer the direction of the service. Could you expand upon that? So we received um, uh, requests for product developments and, and, and new products or features at these forums via um, an SOR or Statement of Requirement Request from, from CPs. And it's where we take uh, an initial assessment of these requirements and then following on from that we have collaboration workshops in sitting down working with customers to understand the requirements that could be on a bilateral basis or in an in a, in a industry workshop. And then we understand what, clearly what our customers want and then we go and work with our design partners to develop those capabilities. And it's collaboration because we actually feed back along that development process to our customers so they clearly understand what we're developing and making sure that we, as OpenReach, meet our customers' needs. And I'll just add to that, that you know, the industry forums are a key thing. It's really, you know, it's how we are here talking about the, the OSS, uh, the optical spectrum service. So um, it, it really is the thing that sort of drives the engine. So, you know, put it, making sure any customers who are watching this put any requirements that they have into those industry forums is really key. And Darren, can you talk a little bit about the, the technology side and how customers have engaged with you as well? Because I know Adva Optical Networking obviously works very closely with their customers too. Yeah, so obviously we have a, you know, we, we get uh, involvement sometimes directly from some of the, the OpenReach customers, so we then kind of make sure that then, then 
engaged back through the SRM, uh, SRM teams with, uh, with John and, and the guys in the sales specialist to make sure that you know, they're looking at the, the right product for them, basically. So, yeah, we're, we're working very closely with, with the OpenReach teams across the world, so the product guys, the sales guys, to make sure that you know, we're, we're, we're meeting what the customers sure. want. It's great that it's been developed not in isolation, but again, with the industry, for the industry, and really for the customers. I think that's great. From these discussions, Darren, what would you say the three key features are that OSS has really addressed? Um, what we've addressed with this product launch is speed to market. So in terms of lead time and delivery for customers, we've shortened that down substantially to a 35-day working lead time. We've also addressed footprint. So we had specific feedback around too much, you're taking too much space up in our cabinets, the solution's too clunky. We've really addressed that with a smaller footprint, one new chassis, um, which customers are really, really interested in. And also, it's around price. We've really, we've really looked at um, our service from end to end to ensure that that service is, is very good value for money. Sure, and do I understand that IL2 accreditation is, is something that you've been focusing on? We have, and we hot on the heels of the product launch. Um, we followed up with doing all the required assessments for IL2 for the OSA FSP3000 product. And we made announcements in April around we've achieved the accreditation at the end of March, and we've um, subsequently launched that accreditation. So that's ideal for any CPs or customers that are interested in using the solution for government type or public type contracts where um, the, the um, adherence to IL2 standards are required. Sure. Going back to some of the points you made there regarding kind of efficiencies around cost, space, power. Um, Darren, can you talk a little bit about the FSP 3000 and what it does to address these kind of pain points? Yeah, so if you kind of go back through Darren's point, so I think the first one he raised was lead time. So obviously the, the OSS uh, with the FSP 3000 is on a 35 day lead time, which, you know, is challenging for an optical service. That's, that's really sort of, you know, market leading, I think. Um, and obviously as part of that, we needed to, to raise our game and make sure that we could deliver to a shorter lead time, which we've done and, and is proven in some of the installs that have already happened, you know, we can meet it sort of thing. But you know, that, that's a challenge, so that's one thing we stepped up to. From a pricing point of view, we also, with the FSP 3000 and its modular nature, there, there was um, abilities for cost savings for the customer. You could suddenly use uh, MUX bonder cards, so suddenly you can aggregate up large amounts of data onto a single card and the way the open reach service is priced is on a per wavelength. So suddenly, you know, there's some cost savings there to the end customer. Uh, and then the, from a footprint one, I think Darren's probably covered this already, but the one new shelf, we're seeing a lot of designs really taking up the, the one new shelf option, probably a lot more than what we expected actually. You know, before we were, we, we'd assume that the seven new would be the default for most customers. But I think, as Darren said, in exchanges or potentially just in their own customer premises, footprint and space is a real premium so if they can get away with just using a one u a one u standard and then grow that to four wavelengths over you know something less than seven u then it's a great option for those customers okay and the things like latency and reach uptime is this something you're working on as well yeah so so the latency thing is kind of inherently in there uh, our access cards are very low latency so for, for customers like the banks and the finance industry which is a key thing you know low latency high frequency trading all these things all these sort of buzzwords we, the, the inherent nature is there, so if, if, if that's something they want to look at, then I'd recommend they go, come and talk to John and his team. And that was one of the things that we introduced as part of some of the changes with launching the FSP 3000. We actually provide latency figures when we design the services, so when our sales specialists work with the customers to understand their requirements, we do the uh, FSP 3000 designs. We're actually on, on the plans with the fibre routes, we're actually providing customers with an indi indication of the latency figures for that particular particular service and also a change in our behaviour when we actually install the services. We're actually testing at the end of the service and in, as part of the handover pack when we install and commission the, with the customer, we're providing the actual latencies on a wavelength basis to those customers. So again, that was one of the things that our customers wanted to understand from OpenReach and that's something that we work very hard with yourselves in ADVA to deliver. Yeah, that's a really good point actually, just to kind of say that again. So, you know, the customer on, on day one when they're doing the design request will get a theoretical latency figure. So, you know, they can look at that and think, well, no, that doesn't actually meet what I need or, you know what, that's perfect, that's exactly it. But then to back that up, then they actually get the actual figure. So on the day of install, they'll then get as part of the handover document, the actual latency figure. So yeah, as Darren said, it's something that was a, a big request from a lot of customers and it's a, another tick in the box. 
Okay. Listening to you guys talk, it really sounds like everything has gone incredibly smoothly. John, would, have there been any surprises along the way that you've found? Um, no real surprises, because uh, we, in, in, in looking through our full product launch process, is that we, in working with customers, we understood what the, the take-up was going to be. We were prepared for the take-up. Um, we've worked with our delivery team to understand the, the forecast and, and the nature of, uh, of future orders. We work very uh, closely with, with Darren and, and Advert on understanding those, uh, those orders and, and the forecast so that we're actually planning uh, well in advance. And, and customers understand that and they, they actually understand and they, they, they help us because they understand that it will help them with the delivery times and their plans with their with their end to end processes the development piece doesn't doesn't stop here it, it's something we're constantly on with we've already spoken to a number of customers about um, the next 12 months of development and what we're looking to actually bring into the uh, into the portfolio and that's a constantly evolving thing that will continue to work hand in hand with adver and very much led from from a product line perspective okay you lead into a question there that i wanted to ask next and that's Really, what does the next 12 months look like, the roadmaps and this type of thing? I wondered if we could just hear from you on what is next. Darren, perhaps starting with you. Yeah, sure. So in terms of open reach on the back of the successful launch of the 3000, we're looking to develop the portfolio further. We're looking at um, additional requirements in terms of structures and architectures, which currently we can do on a point-to-point -point basis. We're looking to build some ring and architecture designs using the 3000 chassis, but also looking at um, additional capability to extend the reach, for example, Gareth. So we're looking at midpoint amplifiers to try and extend the distances that we currently have on a route distance of around about extending from the current 100 route kilometres that we've got today to um, push those boundaries even further for those services. But also we're looking at additional capability with some hub and spoke designs as well and the higher bandwidth services such as the 40 and 100 gigabit um, wavelength services that we're also looking to consider to consume and launch for customers on the FSP 3000. Okay, fantastic. And Darren. Yeah, no, I think Darren covered them all actually. The only other one that we, we've potentially started looking at is maybe something around the 16 gig fiber channel, but it kind of fits in with regards to the sort of the higher bandwidth. You know, the, the amount of bandwidth is go, only going one way. So it's just uh, just back to what we said earlier around the customer forums and making sure the guys and, and the customers who are watching this video sort of really put their requests into that, be it mid spans, be it 100 gig, be it 16 gig fiber channel. We want to hear from them basically. Okay. John, anything else that you'd like to add to that? No, I suppose the, the, the only thing to, to, to finish on is that we're, we're still seeing huge growth, huge interest, and what we're now starting to, to work through is how we're working with some of our, our smaller customers who are now seeing the requirements and, and the opportunities that it's presenting them um, for the price points that we've, that we've put in the marketplace. So, so huge opportunity. Great growth, great, great, a large amount of activity moving forward and, and, and looking forward to the to continuous development of the product. Great, okay. Well, guys, thanks for the catch-up today and for letting us know what's happening. I appreciate it. And if you'd like to know more about OSS or what's happening in this space, please email ethernet at openreach.co.uk or for more information on the FSP3000, please email info at adveroptical.com. Thanks for your time.